This is the idyllic scene we like to imagine for our milk production. Happy cows grazing on unspoiled green meadows. But how does that square with milk that has never before been so cheap? So cheap that the dairy farmers who produce it can't even recoup their costs. There are only losers in this game. And the losers aren't just here in Europe. So who picks up the real tab for our bargain basement milk? Our research takes us first to the Bavarian Alps, to Allgäu, one of the traditional dairy producing regions in Germany. Under normal circumstances, Erwin Reinalter would feed his cows and then let them back out into the meadow. But right now, he's in the process of gradually selling off his livestock. Basically, you milked your cows for the last time here today. How does it feel? It's strange. It was a routine, day in, day out, 365 days a year. And suddenly it's all over. Mm. What price have you been getting lately? 27.25 cents per litre. You can't produce for that. It's just not enough. It's not enough, even though the EU subsidizes farmers like Rheinalter to the tune of 6.8 billion euros a year in the form of direct payments. He's giving up, like more than 40,000 other dairy farmers in the last 10 years. Another farmer bought Lena and Sabina, his last two dairy cows of a herd that once numbered 35. It's a tough day. Ryan Alter tried to fight for a price of 50 cents per liter of milk delivered to the dairies. But that price was out of the question even when things were normal not to mention during the milk crisis. But is that really what consumers want? The cheapest milk, regardless of who pays the price? We conduct our own straw poll, with a shopping basket full of milk ranging from the cheapest to the most expensive. Imagine I'm the shop. I've got everything from 1 euro 19 down to 46 cents. Well, I'd probably buy the house organic brand or some other brand of organic milk. Because it's organic. Exactly. I generally go for organic because the farmers are earning nothing here and the dairy tradition is worth maintaining. This one and this one. Yes, exactly. It's from the region, so I know I'm supporting my local farmers. I've got it all from 119 down to 46 cents. Honestly, the mountain farmer milk. Why? Because that's what I always drink, and I know that it's fair trade. So everyone wants happy cows and happy farmers, but last year consumers paid an average of just 63 cents for a liter of fresh milk. And indeed, it's almost spooky how cheap dairy products have become here. In 1960, a worker had to labor for 11 minutes to earn the price of a liter of milk. Now, two minutes is long enough. Butter is an even more extreme case. It's cheaper now than it was in 1950. In the same period, the average German wage has grown eightfold. But why are dairy products so cheap here these days? We visit Eurotier, the world's biggest trade fair for animal husbandry, in search of answers. The main thing we learn is how industrialized everything is. High performance through technology and automation. The milk is still from real cows, but these are high-performance cows. They produce more and more milk with their almost monstrous udders. This cow's great-great-great-great-grandmother gave about 2,500 liters of milk per annum. Thanks to careful breeding and special food, these cows can produce more than four times that much. But they won't last as long. In the old days, a dairy cow would give milk for 15 to 20 years. The turbo cow is ready for the slaughterhouse after about four or five years. Nature's reason for cows giving milk is to feed their calves. One haul on, however, we learned that modern day milk is too expensive for that, even at today's giveaway prices. 
Instead, calves are given a kind of milk substitute, known as milk replacer. This executive from a manufacturing firm tells me what's in it. According to the list of ingredients, there is some milk in there, but what else? It says raw protein here. What's that made of? Not milk? Milk protein, skimmed milk powder, whey powder, and vegetable fats. What kind of vegetable fat? Coconut and palm. Palm oil? Yes, palm oil. Why not just give the calves milk? Well, they want to get as much out of the milk as possible, the dairies. At the end of the day, it's easier and cheaper for the farmers. Palm oil from the tropics instead of mother's milk, just so that it's cheaper for us to buy. We visit a farmer who has invested in all this high-tech equipment. Hans-Josef Landes runs a model company. His state-of-the-art stall has space for 135 dairy cows. They're taken care of by technology. One robot pushes the feed toward the cattle. Another sweeps the cow dung through the gaps in the floor. Even the milking is fully automated. That way, the farmer and his family can keep twice as many cows as before. She's in line now? She's waiting in line. We call it come and go cow traffic in there. They can always go to the robot and they can frequently ask the robot, is it my turn now or not? And the robot decides whether or not to milk the cow. Only a handful of the villagers here have gone down this road. Once there were 34 dairy farmers here, now there are just three. Although Landis invested in modern technology, as the politicians and the Farmers Association have been calling for for years now, he's constantly on the brink of bankruptcy. He can barely turn over enough to pay his staff of three people. Right now you're getting about 27 cents a liter. How much would you have to get to make it worthwhile? The last time I did a thorough calculation, I came to the conclusion that I need to earn 47 cents a litre. That's pretty crass, isn't it? <laughs> Landis sells his milk to the Zott dairy, one of the ten largest in Germany. Much more milk started arriving here when the EU abolished milk quotas about two years ago. As the surplus of milk rose, the prices went down dramatically. That made the export market more important. Zott alone sells its products in 75 countries. The head of milk purchasing, Christian Schramm, says it's a logical development. In the end, the agricultural reform of 2006, the political decision to liberate the dairy market, to free it from state influence, ultimately meant exposing the European dairy market to global influences. So it's up to the farmer to figure out how to cover his costs? Well, that's the way it is with all businesses these days. Whether it's good or bad is something else entirely. But that's the way it is. I have to survive the conditions of the market I'm active on. Yogurt, milk and similar products don't keep forever. Therefore, what they can't sell fresh, the big dairies process into a product with a longer shelf life. Depending on the market phase, we also produce full cream milk powder, skimmed milk powder, classic products, and we sell them. Apparently, all the big German dairies operate with the same policies. In the last few years alone, the biggest of them, Deutsches Milchkontor, invested 70 million euros in plant for the production of milk powder. We find out that a fraction of it is bought by producers of ready-cooked meals and the like. But who buys the rest? We get the answer outside Wilhelmshaven. Whenever the price of milk falls below a certain level, the EU buys up a load of milk powder. 350,000 tons last year alone. That's the equivalent of 80,000 tankers full of milk.
Was passiert What happens with the milk or milk powder? Oder mit diesem Milchpulver? Das wird gelagert. Uh, it goes into storage and Brussels decides when the product can go back on the market, when the market is ready. Gebracht wird, wenn der Markt das wieder hergibt. Then the goods are taken out of storage and sold again as foodstuffs. Als Lebensmittel auch wieder verkauft. The EU rents out 30 of these storage facilities in Germany. Here, Heinz Wessels and his colleagues run regular checks to make sure everything is okay with our milk lake. But that costs money. This is one way the taxpayer ends up footing the bill after all for the cheap milk of recent months. In addition to the direct payments to farmers, the taxpayer is also financing subsidies for the dairy industry. So first the EU liberalizes the market and then it intervenes again. That can't be right. Martin Häusling, Green member of the European Parliament, considers the packed storage facilities paid for by the state as a symbol of bad policy. To an extent, these are the politics of the 1970s and 80s. Back then, we had milk lakes and butter mountains. And we're going back in that direction. The reason is simple. We're producing far too much milk, milk that nobody wants. So the EU, in other words the taxpayer, intervenes and stores it all. That makes no sense for the dairy farmers, nor for the market, or for European coffers. It's an act of desperation. So what happens? The lion's share is exported. 20% of the exports go to sub-Saharan Africa, where there's a stable and growing market. It's a totally crazy system that only works because we massively subsidize our agriculture. It's hard to believe that it pays to sell our milk to Africa. We find a haulier who specializes in dairy products. He confirms what we've heard and gives us some more details over the telephone. In welche Länder geht what es countries da? does it go to? Uh, okay, Moment, das notiere ich Just a moment, kurz. I have to write it down. Um, so Guinea. Guinea. Guinea Bissau. Guinea Bissau. Ja. Senegal. Senegal. Mauritania. Mauritania. Cameroon. Cameroon. Ghana. 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 Togo. Togo. Okay, okay also basically all along the coast. Okay. okay, thank you very much. Goodbye. Both the EU and all the big German dairies are involved in this business. Politicians want the exports. The white goods make their way south from the freight terminals in Bremerhaven or Rotterdam. We follow the milk on its 7,000 kilometer journey. To Douala, the largest port in the erstwhile German colony of Cameroon and gateway to neighboring states, such as Chad and the Central African Republic. We meet up with Francisco Mari, an activist for fair trade conditions. He's the technical expert for world nutrition, food and agricultural policy at the non-governmental organization Brot für die Welt. He's brought along a selection of dairy products from the local supermarket, mainly milk powder. This is, this is from France? France? Exactly, okay. French milk powder. Uh -huh. This is That's Arla. Oh, yeah, you can get that in Germany too. It's this from Denmark. Denmark. Arla Milchkontor. There are German versions now too. Seriously? <laughs> sure. <laughs> what amazes me is long life milk produced by the big German dairy Megle, packed in Slovakia. How can it pay to transport milk so far? There's milk here too. Well, because our dairy production systems make it possible, quite simply. Through subsidies and factory farming, Germany and the EU managed to hold their own on all the world's milk markets. In other words, because our milk is so cheap, Africa is accessible. We can compete here. Of course, wage and profit expectations are lower here. Cameroon is reasonably prosperous by African standards. The big cities have middle classes who try to emulate European lifestyles. We visit a supermarket in the capital, Yaoundé, to find out if you can only get European dairy produce here. We are accompanied by Ivan Takan, who as part of a local Cameroonian action group has been campaigning on behalf of local farmers. There are plenty of local goods here, but no homegrown dairy products. You can get yogurt from Cameroon's biggest dairy, but it's made with milk powder. And because there's not a single milk powder factory in Cameroon, it has to be imported. 
And then I spot yogurt by Zot. That's it. This is German. Quality. Made in Germany. Made right in so Germany. Quality. 100 grams of the Bavarian yogurt cost 33 cents. That's cheaper than the yogurt produced locally using milk powder. So it seems so unbelievable to me that this traveled so far yeah. and still costs... So that's where you have the competition, the unfair competition. Milk powder from abroad, German yogurt. Is there no homegrown milk in Cameroon? There are cows, anyway. Along with Francisco Mari of Broad für die Welt, we drive north to the province of Adamoa. Here we visit Hayatu El Haji Sule. The veterinarian keeps 26 dairy cows and crosses local breeds with European dairy cows in a bid to increase productivity. The cows are milked once a day. The rest of the time, the calves drink the milk. The local co-op pays at least 37 cents per liter of milk, more than most farmers in Germany get. The farmer can feed one employee and his family of 10. But the going has gotten tough against the competition from the EU. It's a problem because it reduces the amount of our produce that gets bought. The competition is tough. Do you think it's fair competition? It's not fair. Far from it. We ought to be increasing production locally in order to improve people's lives. That would create jobs for people in Cameroon. Instead, the farm has to hold its own against heavily subsidized milk from Europe. It's a typical example of totally failed agriculture and development policy when our products are on the market and they can make them themselves here. It really is an unfair situation to take jobs away from people here so they can scheme off a little profit with our yogurts in the local supermarkets. Hayatu El Haji Sule invites us to a small dairy in the regional capital, Ngoundere, where his milk is used to produce yogurt. First, the milk is heated to 90 degrees Celsius. Then it's fermented, and finally the yogurt is bottled. 150 farmers sell their milk here. Voilà, merci. It's delicious. <laughs> Yogurt is the traditional way to consume milk in Cameroon. The fermented milk keeps better in the hot climate. Fresh yogurt is served as a sauce to go with rice, for example. The following morning, we go with Francisco Mari to meet Hayatu El Haji Soleil one more time. On the outskirts of Nagaundere is the construction site of a new, bigger dairy, where the local co-op hopes to produce in bigger quantities using more professional methods. What's all this here? We started building a dairy. How realistic is the idea of a place like this helping provide Cameroon's milk needs? With many small setups like this one, close to the dairy farmers and working as cooperatives, it's very like our system, so it's very realistic. But the project has stalled. Nothing is being built right now. The cooperative just isn't making enough money with its yogurt made in Cameroon. And the reason why is to be found in this local supermarket. A truck takes at least two days to get here from the port of Douala. Nevertheless, the fridge in the village shop is stocked with yogurt from Sot, for about the same price as the local produce. How can yogurt that has traveled so far cost more or less the same as the yogurt that the farmers make themselves? 
Ja, das ist in Europa ja einfach durch Well, Milchkrise. it's possible because of the milk crisis in Europe, because we have such intensive farming, because the prices are really rock bottom. That quickly affects the markets in Africa. That's globalization. And then you see how low the prices are for our own farmers. If you look at their costs, the prices are similar. Higher to El Haji Soleil tries the competition's yogurt. Yeah, it tastes good. <laughs> it tastes good, but it's bad for our economy. <laughs> what we find a few blocks away is even worse. More and more yogurt is being made not from milk, but of much cheaper milk powder. Even at the heart of Cameroon dairy country, milk powder already has a market share of more than 50%. And no wonder, the yogurt made from milk powder costs a third of locally produced yogurt. They show us the sacks. The powder is from the EU. Denmark, huh? Yeah. This is Ireland. Ireland. Not, not Ireland. Ireland, well, Northern Ireland, in other words, Britain. And some of it is not even from real milk. Okay. Yeah, but this is milk. This is milk fat. But this has palm oil in it. Is it cheaper to buy milk powder with vegetable fat? Yes, exactly. I was shocked enough to see calves being reared in Germany on this palm oil mixture instead of milk. But now I find that we're selling this kind of milk substitute to Africa for people. Would it be wrong to say this is substandard? I mean, it's not real milk. At best, it's a kind of milk with a high proportion of vegetable fat and no milk fat, which is the nutritional part. That's extracted in Europe to make butter and replaced with palm oil so they can be sold on very cheap. You can tell by the retail price. The only way to offer the people here a stable long-term living is to help them build a functioning agricultural system. But that's hardly possible as long as the producers of cheap EU milk can corner the market. And it gets worse. The EU helped pay for the construction of a new dairy here with development funds. But the plant has been waiting for two months to be commissioned. The expensive machinery is there, but there are no dairy farmers to supply the milk. The cooperative we visited earlier has opted to use its own plant. And the other farmers in the region are reluctant to increase production because of the competition from the cheap EU milk. We want to get the EU to explain this to us, so we arrange an appointment with European Agriculture Commissioner Phil Hogan. We show him the glossy brochure with the brand new unused dairy built with EU money in Cameroon. I mean, we are investing European money in a project like that quite a lot. Same time, we have um, European milk powder on this market, which is so cheap that never ever can you beat that price with a local product. I agree with you that we should not be spending a lot of money on facilities and just uh, allowing people to get on with their lo uh, local people to be able to understand what happens next. Mm. We have to be there with technical assistance and financial assistance. So the EU has no intention of changing its basic policy of subsidies. Especially German farmers have been encouraged very much to enter the global market with their milk now. Would you say that is a good way? This is what makes, ensures that the growing populations of the world that want nutritious, uh, high-quality food products in the European Union, that they are now availing of it. And the exports show that we are having some success in 2016. So the exports are encouraged by the politicians. Time to ask the big German dairies, whose products I found in Cameroon, about the consequences. Arla issued a statement saying it doesn't export to Cameroon, merely to neighboring Nigeria. Arla said it was committed to improving the food situation in the region. Sot pointed out that it makes no price recommendations to its partners in Cameroon and that the decision to buy lies with the consumer. Megla says the African region is of interest to the company and that the current low prices are an introductory offer. Companies want to make money, 
Farmers want to get by. Where does German development aid come in? We visit the Ministry for Economic Cooperation to talk to the Assistant Secretary of State, Gunther Beger, who is responsible for rural development. We ask him if it's all about business. How else can we do it? We can't forbid companies from exporting milk to Africa. What we no longer do, something that was heavily criticized for years, is to support these products with export subsidies so they can be sold cheaper on the African markets. We abolished that practice in 2013, and that was major progress. And I think our current situation, with the almost endless amount of refugees, can expand our horizons and open our eyes to the bigger picture. And that includes fair trade and fair trading conditions so that we can create jobs in those countries from which many, many refugees flee, create opportunities to allow them to lead proper lives there. Makes sense. The problem is that if in doubt, the government's export strategy comes first. We go back one more time to Erwin Reinalter, the dairy farmer who packed it in. All he has left are a couple of calves. I tell him about the problems his counterparts in Cameroon are going through. So we produce cheap food and export it to other countries where we also destroy the agricultural system. The whole system is so sick. There are only losers. But there are rays of light, companies that refuse to go along with the vicious circle caused by ever lower milk prices. The Berchtesgadener Land Dairy, for example, continued to pay almost 40 liters of milk even at the height of the milk crisis. It paid more than 50 cents for organic milk. Managing Director Bernhard Pointner says the company makes only what it can sell locally. We're not a big dairy. Milk powder wouldn't make economic sense with the relatively small quantities we produce. So that's out of the question. What we do want is steady sales to the same target group which is interested in our product, which is willing to pay more for better food. And fortunately, because we're not such a huge operation, there's a market for our wares. Regular milk costs about a euro here in the store. Organic milk costs about 30 cents more. One of the farms that delivers its milk here is run by the Halvegers. Milk from cows that live as nature intended. The average consumer drinks about 50 liters of milk per annum. To get milk from this farm, he needs to invest 10 cents a day more in comparison to cheap milk from the discount supermarket. For cows that graze in a meadow. For farmers who can make a living from their work. Surely that's not too much to ask. <laughs>